Before I introduce you with these leaked scripts, let me just say that the scripts for the final season were completed as of Wednesday, July 26th, while those leaks, on the other hand, have been published in August, so there's a chance that these leaks are in fact genuine. Anyways, if you don't want anything to be potentially spoiled, it's time for you to close this video. There stated that the season premiere starts with aftermath of the Night King's attack on Eastwatch by the sea. Undead Viserion sets Kraus and Undead a fire. Tormund and Gindry are able to flee the scene, but Beric Dondarrion stays behind. Beric fights against the army of the dead and supposedly dies off screen, but not before killing the White Walker that killed Ed. Ed is stabbed to death by White Walker a bit earlier. Tormund that Gindry ride for Winterfell wills to see a burning castle black in the background. Then we go to Winterfell. There stated that Daenerys and Jon with their teams arrive in Winterfell. Davos remarks that it has gotten much colder and darker since he has left with Jon. Jon firstly reunites with Arya. Daenerys meets Sansa Stark and Sansa asks whether she and Jon are now in love. Daenerys does not give a proper response. Sansa does not seem to be pleased with Jon returning to Winterfell nor with Daenerys' presence. Let me just stop here for a moment to say that I'm not sure if this part of the leaked script is pointing out that Sansa is not pleased with Jon's return, which would be quite strange since she's the one that pretty much stated that the Starks have to stay together in the pack now that Winter has arrived, or it might be pointing out that Sansa is not happy with Jon bringing the Dragon Queen to Winterfell. This would also be quite surprising, since Sansa should be smart enough to understand that without Daenerys and her dragons, the living side would not stand a chance against the Night King and his vast army. Anyways, then there is stated that Jon notices Sansa's concerns and talks with her to settle everything down. Sansa mentions Littlefinger's death and how he always betrayed them right under their nose. Upon finding out that Jon and others have made a pact with Cersei Lannister, Sansa says that it's plain stupid to work with her. The Hound and Arya also reunite and have a conversation with each other. Arya tells the Hound she did not regret to leave him behind without having him killed off. The Hound responds that she should have had him killed off right there before he has seen all those things beyond the wall. The scene then switches from Winterfell to King's Landing. Jon Greyjoy arrives back in the capital with the Golden Company. They have a meeting with Cersei Lannister in the throne room. Cersei thanks Jon for bringing the Golden Company with his Iron Fleet to King's Landing, whereupon she orders the Commander-in-Chief to take the ancestral seat of House Baratheon and to have the army gathered in the fortress. Cersei explains that Robert Baratheon once told her that the fortress has stood for many centuries and she is sure that it will keep standing during the long night as well. Since there is no Baratheon holding the castle any longer, it will not be too difficult to just take it themselves. Cersei also says they will need to protect themselves during the Great War and Storm's End is basically their best chance for survival. Let me just stop here for a moment to say that this part would make a lot of sense since Storm's End truly is one of the mightiest fortresses on the entire continent and is said to be protected by spells woven into its walls that prevent magic from penetrating its defenses. Storm's End has endured many sieges, but has never fallen to any attacker in its millennia-long history, and therefore Cersei deciding to place her troops over there doesn't come as a huge surprise. After all, Season 7 finale revealed that Cersei's main intention in the final season will be retrieving lands that, in her opinion, belong to her. Anyways, back to the leaked scripts. Later that night, Euron Greyjoy is about to have an intimate relations with Cersei. Euron jokes that she will not miss her brother after she finds out what he can give her, but Cersei's face expression reveals her real feelings. The following morning, Euron leaves with his ship the Silence to ferry the Golden Company to Storm's End to take the fortress. While traveling back to King's Landing, Euron has a conversation with his niece Yara about Queen Cersei. Yara openly tells him that she knows he is not interested in being Queen Cersei's bad husband at all. Euron laughs and tells her that his good friends from Braavos will take care of that problem soon enough. Let me just say that Euron is either referring to the Iron Bank or more probably to a guild of assassins, the Faceless Man, both based in the free city of Braavos. In the novels, it's implied that Euron hired a Faceless Man to kill his brother Balon, which made him the king of the Iron Islands. There's a possibility that in the show, upon marrying Queen Cersei, Euron might hire a faceless man to kill Cersei, which would make him the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. Anyways, upon arriving back to the capital, Euron tells Cersei that it's time for them to finally marry. Then we are going back to the north. Sam reunites with Jon and the two share a hug. Jon tells Sam he's glad to have him back. Daenerys, Jon, Sansa, Tyrion, Davos, Missandei, Sam Varys, the Northern Lords and the Knights of the Vale gather in the Great Hall of Winterfell. Lord Robin and Lord John Royce are also present in this scene. The Northern Lords are not too pleased to accept Daenerys as their queen. Daenerys defends herself very well, but she does not get the support of the North just yet. Lyanna Mormont tells Daenerys Targaryen that she will never call her Your Grace, because she only knows one king and that's Jon Snow, the king in the North. Tyrion smiles and mentions that she's a ferocious girl, on which Jorah replies that the Mormons don't stand back for anything. 
John tells them there's no time to argue with each other and brings up that there has not been a word of the Lannister army yet. Sansa responds that she warned them not to trust Cersei Lannister. Tyrion mentions that they can trust his brother Jaime, but Daenerys does not seem to agree on this one. The group discusses how they will defend the North against the Night King's army. John tells Robin it's wise to bring Uri into the fold and to lure the Night King in there. Robin doesn't really seem to care and accepts John's proposal. After the meeting, Daenerys tells John that the Northerners really are stubborn and small-minded people. There's then stated that Theon Greyjoy visits the Godswood of Winterfell and thinks of his friend Rob and meets with Bran Stark. As we all know, the last time we've seen Theon, he did not leave with Jon and Daenerys for Winterfell, but has rallied the remaining Ironborn left in Dragonstone and formed a rescue party so he could at least try to save Yara. There's a possibility that Theon earlier in the episode arrived on the Iron Islands, only to find out that Euron has left for Essos with his Iron Fleet to bring the Golden Company. Upon figuring out that his rescue mission failed, as Euron most certainly did not leave Yara behind, Theon would possibly go to Winterfell where Daenerys and the rest currently are, but there is no mention of that in the leaked script. Anyways, there's stated that Theon immediately apologizes to Bran for everything he has done against House Stark, but Bran tells him there's no need for that. Bran knows that Theon has redeemed himself by saving his sister Sansa. Bran also reveals to Theon that he has seen how much he has suffered at the hands of Ramsay Bolton. Theon asks him how he knows all of this, but Bran doesn't respond to that. Arya and Brienne are training and Jon is impressed by his sister's fighting skills. Arya mentions that she has never forgotten to stick her enemies with the pointy end, which was her first lesson that she received from Jon in the second episode of the very first season. John asks Arya why she did not join the meeting in the Great Hall of Winterfell. Arya answers that Sansa is way better in those things than she is. Then we go from Westeros to Essos. In Volantis, Lady Melisandre enters the Red Temple. Before I go any further, let me just remind you that earlier in the season 7, Melisandre revealed to Varys that she decided to depart for Volantis shortly, so this does not come unexpected. Melisandre is welcomed by Kinvara, who is the High Priestess of the Red Temple at Volantis. Melisandre tells Kinvara that she's played her part in the Great War to come. She has united ice and fire. She has served King Jon Snow, the prince who was promised, and brought him back to life. Kinvara tells Melisandre that she's served their god well on that part, but she also made a lot of mistakes where she needs to pay for. Kinvara tells Melisandre that their god demands one more sacrifice of Melisandre, which requires her to return to Westeros to the north. Melisandre answers that she is not allowed to enter the North. Kinvara smiles and answers Melisandre that she could benefit from her punishment then. Back to Westeros, we see Jaime Lannister at the inn at the crossroads, where he reunites with Bronn. Jaime is surprised to see Bronn and asks him why he followed him. Bronn answers that there's nothing left for him in that stinking city and he is down for some adventure in the North. Jaime is glad to have Bronn by his side. Bronn asks Jaime why he has left the woman he loves the most, but Jaime does not completely respond to his question. Then he asks what he's planning to do now that he has left King's Landing. Jamie tells Bran that he's on his way to Riveron to bring the Garrus and Lannister army back to the fold. Bran asks him why he would give up the castle he has been occupying, and Jamie answers with, What purpose and game would Riveron have for me? For all I care, Edmir can have it back. The last scenes take place at Winterfell. Tormund and Gindry finally arrive over there. Jon Snow asks Sansa why Bran didn't take the time to join the meeting in the Great Hall and didn't even come to speak to him. Sansa tells Jon that Bran has changed a lot and calls himself the Three-Eyed Raven now. She tells him not to expect much of a conversation with him. Sam comes in between and tells Jon there's something he and Bran urgently need to tell him. Bran first sees Jon in Godswood. Jon mentions that he has encountered a Vorge beyond the Wall, on which Sam responds that Bran is much more than a Vorge, he possesses a magical ability to perceive the future, past or distant events in dreams. The two then inform Jon Snow about his parentage, which Jon doesn't seem to believe on the first glance. In order to convince Jon that he's telling the truth, Bran tells Jon that he knows everything about him. Bran says, I saw you beyond the wall surrounded by free folk. I saw you fighting at Hardhome against the Night King and his army, and I saw how you were stabbed to death by your own men. Jon still cannot really believe he's the Targaryen. The season premiere of the final season ends with Sam stating to Jon that he's the one with the right claim on the Iron Throne, not Daenerys Targaryen, but Aegon Targaryen.